welcome to another episode of the A-List Movie Club. I am your host, the game changer, Wes Truth. And with me, as always, every week, we've got Dominic and John. How's it going tonight, guys? It's good, going. good. How you guys doing? Good. <laughs> and uh, this week, uh, well, of course, this is the show where e- every week one of us picks a different movie for the others to check out. And uh, this week it was my turn. Uh, of course, by the title, you would know that. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> So this week I chose the... 2013 horror remake of Evil Dead. There it is. (laughs) (laughs) Mia Allen attempts to overcome her addiction to heroin with the help of her estranged older brother, David, his girlfriend, and their mutual friends. The five friends gather at Mia and David's family cabin in the woods, and they vow not to let Mia leave the property until she overcomes the addiction. Unbeknownst to them, the cabin's basement was used for something very sketchy since the last time they were there. When one of the friends accidentally released a demon by reading an incantation from an evil book, Mia is possessed by the demon and her brother and the friends find their lives in big time danger. So the movie was directed by Fede Alvarez in his directorial debut. And of course, uh, later on, he directed Don't Breathe, also with star Jane Levy, and uh, The Girl in the Spider's Web, which is was like a, a knockoff version of Girl in the Dragon Tattoo, another version of that, of a book from there. And that I didn't really care for that one that much, but can't win them all. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this, the film was released on April 5th, 2013. So, Dominic, I'm sure <laughs> you would like to go first. I have a two-word review. It's shit. <laughs> now, I swear to God, you I did this not- in the theater with me, and you liked it. Bullshit. I That's swear it. on my baby metal Blu-rays. Well, <laughs> just going in the trash. <laughs> um, it, this movie was horrible. There was there was no redeeming value of it at all. Um, the acting was terrible. The uh, the it was shot so dark that you could barely see sometimes what was going on. It was gore for gore's sake. That's what it was. All this movie was was just a, a some guy's wet dream of a gore movie. That's all it was. The direction was horrible. I mean, I don't mind gore in movies. There's a lot of movies that I love that were really, really gory. Saw being one of them. Um, you know, The Dawn of the Dead and a lot of the zombie movies, things like that. But this was just horrible. Oh, my God. Wesley... I think John and I are going to sit there and and form a coup and not let you pick any more movies. No, I'm just... I I don't know. I just didn't... Maybe I'm being too hard on it, but I just... I did not like it. I just... I didn't think... You know, the... Oh, they got a book. We read a freaking incantation and a a demon appeared. Like any other goddamn 75 other movies you know oh no we found a book it's all (laughs) latin and stuff like that and there's devil horns and shit like that let's read it you know that's just stupid well, I can't disagree. <laughs> but if they didn't read it, we wouldn't have a movie, would we? <laughs> that would have been be- that would have been preferred. <laughs> All right, Johnny, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, um, I just finished watching this movie like an hour ago, actually, so it's pretty fresh, and I already forgot most of it. So, um, yeah, I don't. It's so rapid that. You barely have time to know who the characters are. Yeah, I wasn't invested. In, I was like, "Wait, was that Olivia or Natalie? Which one is that girl?" Like, I couldn't remember who was who. 
other than me, because they say her name all the damn time. Yeah. You, know, you, you don't get enough time to get to know who they are. Like, I didn't even know that guy in the blonde girl with Dayton. They started calling each other hun and stuff. I'm like, oh, that's his girlfriend? I didn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't care for the, uh, the the main actor. I don't even know who he is. Mia's brother. Shiloh Fernandez, I think it is. Yeah, I don't know who he is. Oh, but he, the household name there. Yeah, he should uh, not quit his day job. Cause he was <laughs> yeah. Probably, he's probably working late night at a Taco Bell drive through now. <laughs> He's probably a member of the crew, and a guy went, hey, you want to be in this movie? Get in there. <laughs> I've seen better acting in high school plays. Yeah, it was bad. I didn't really care for him at all. I thought he was terrible. He had, like, no, uh, like, his face didn't change no matter what his emotions were. I don't know. Uh, there, was, there was one pretty cool, gory scene when the chick was cutting up her face. That was like a shock, like, uh, not a shocker, but it, it was. I thought that one was pretty well done. Yeah, yeah. It, it kind of has a low budget feel to it because it's like, like Dom there's like no big name actors. I knew two people this whole movie. I knew the chick from Don't Breathe and the girl from Cloverfield. That's all I knew. Yeah, um, I, don't... I agree with Dom. It's sort of just gory to be gory, like. You know, is that really a a plot or a story? It's just they should have. They, I think they should have played up the creep factor, the creepy factor. If they would have played up, the, made it more creepy than gory. I think it could have been a decent movie. I know there was some creepiness. I have in my stuff, but I uh, I nicknamed this movie "Arms Up" because every single time they're being attacked, someone sticks their damn arm up. <laughs> nail gun, nail gun puts his arm up. Nails. A girl's coming at him with a whatever that was, a crowbar. Puts his arm up. Like that's all he do. The whole movie's with their arms up. I don't know. It was, just, it was annoying to me. Yeah, I didn't take notice. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really. Uh, I don't know. I like horror, but it's so cliche. Like Dom, they're it's a bunch of idiots in this movie. Like they were yeah. so stupid. I was kind of rooting for them to die. They do dumb yeah. shit. Like every horror movie, it's not just this one. but So now this is what gets me, John. And this isn't like every horror movie, but this one especially. What is going to be that bitch's story when she gets back to civilization? And oh, everyone that came with me is dead. Uh, there should be no chance in hell with her arm, her hand missing. She should be squirting out blood every heartbeat. She should bleed right. to death before she even gets anywhere. Right. She should be halfway in the woods and drop over. Right. I mean, seriously. She walked around like, like it's an everyday thing. Ah, I lost my hand. No biggie. Yeah. There is oh, a... Well. There is a... Uh, there was a scene that was cut in the mid credit scenes of someone driving by and picking her up in a truck, by the way. <laughs> but still, she should still be bleeding all over yeah. the place. And oh well, there's a lot of things. Dade, <laughs> huh? Yeah, you should be dead. All right, <laughs> so now I'll jump in and be this movie's white knight. <laughs> 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 um, I thought it's one of the better horror remakes of its era when everything was coming oh. out with the Friday the Thirteenth, the Nightmare on Elm Street, the Texas Chainsaw. When they were remaking everything, the zombie Halloween, I thought this was one of the better ones uh, because it has the spirit of the original film, but also pays homage and respects the original um, and, and does its own thing in the same way. I think, and it's, I think it's a nice throwback to 80s horror. Um, I like that it's a different story with different characters. They didn't just recast somebody as Ash uh, from the original. Uh, which I think that's better than doing a carbon copy of the remake. It's like have a point to it when you do it. Uh, definitely, this is not for the squeamish. There's uh, tons of buckets of blood, guts, and gore, which I love that. <laughs> because Maybe because I didn't expect it to be that much when I first saw it. Um, I think the effects are they're really great practical effects. 
It's not CGI. You don't see some big freaking bug going up the wall or <laughs> stuff like that. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely it capitalizes on things that make you cringe, like cutting your tongue with a blade or like a needle that comes this close to your eyeball, among many other things. Um, I, I did think it had a creepiness factor to it, uh, like with the makeup and stuff like that. Uh, some of the, you know, when she's in the water and stuff and he's going down to the basement, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, I didn't think there were any cheap jump scares. There's no umbrella jump scare, like rings, <laughs> where the umbrella pops up and it's like, oh, that was supposed to scare the audience. Okay. Um, I think the ones we got were effective. Uh, this does have a definitely more of a serious tone than the original. This has a few campy moments that made me laugh, but I would have liked a little more campiness, I think. It does take itself a little too serious at times. Um, of course, some of these characters don't make the best decisions, uh, some of which will make us face palm or yell at the screen, like reciting things out of the evil book after bad things are already starting to happen. Um, other than Mia, I thought the characters were pretty forgettable. Um, the only reason that you liked Mia is because you got the hots for her. And that leads me to my next point, where I said in my original review that, uh, when I was talking about Jean Levy, I said I would marry this girl in a hot second. Well, that proposal's still out there. Just putting that out there. Uh, <laughs> oh, this movie, oh, this movie was great. I give it an eight. Jeez. Well, we're getting there. So <laughs> I thought the rest of the cast is, eh, you know, car carbon copy teens type things, but. Whatever. Um, and I thought it had a cool score as well. This was creepy music. Um, yeah, I, I had I had a good time with this movie. Did, John, have you ever seen the original? I have saw it way back a long when. time ago. Yeah. I haven't seen it. Oh gosh. I saw all three, but I have not seen them in probably over twenty years. Yeah. I don't um, watch the TV show. No, right. I didn't either. Um they used over 70,000 gallons of fake blood. <laughs> the original used 300 gallons. I believe it. The film was shot in chronological order. Oh, wow. So that if there was, if there was blood on the floor or the ceilings, they wouldn't have to wipe it off to shoot a different scene. Right. And more like real life. If someone gets killed, their blood's not going to disappear in five minutes. It'll still be there. <laughs> That's more interesting than the movie. Um. Yeah, <laughs> I did not. I did not remember that opening when it first started. I'm like, is this the right movie? <laughs> I was gonna text you. Yeah, <laughs> you put it on, and I'm like, I'm gonna text you. And go, how does this movie start? Because I think I'm in the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> I I seriously did not remember the opening, and then it started. I'm like, okay, maybe that was like an alternate opening, but no, it wasn't. So I'm like, okay, I just. Don't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> um, the characters' names are David, Eric, Mia, Olivia, and Natalie. Spells demon. Yep. <laughs> it was originally NC-17. Studio made them cut it to an R. So I don't know what the hell they cut out if they left that shit in. Well, I know on the Blu-ray, it's the unrated cut. I'm not sure if that's the cut you have, too, John. No, I just have DVD. Oh, okay. Regular DVD. I'm not gonna get it on Blu-ray because I'm probably never gonna watch it again. <laughs> I probably will. <laughs> if, Just because if, you got a boner for the star. I was watching going, you like this chick because she's like a demon for 90% of the movie. Like she's not even, I, oh, I'd she's totally be bad if that was me in that cabin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when the producers approached Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell about doing a remake. Rami, uh, Sam Raimi was great, enthusiastic. Bruce Campbell said no. So they told him, well, no one's going to play Ash. You know, we're going to start over the whole new crew. And then he was like, oh, okay. And he was on board. Uh, yeah, all practical effects, no CGI. This is in the same continuity as the original three. Oh, wow. 
So it fits in the timeline. There was supposed to be a sequel with Ash and Mia teaming up. But since this didn't do well financially, they nixed that and turned it into the TV show, which I, again I've never seen. I did hear that there is a sequel in the works, though. Still. Oh okay. Why? I don't know, I don't know who's going to be in it, but <laughs> why? The question would be more like, why are they making it, not who's going to be in it? Yeah. Who yeah. <laughs> was another girl had the role before she dropped out? Lily Collins. Oh, yeah, daughter. Yeah, she dropped out and then it went to your girlfriend. Well, she <laughs> obviously got more sense. No, let's rate this pig. <laughs> All right, you can go first. One. I have trivia, too. Oh! <laughs> wow. Well, wow, one. That's like Howard the Duck territory. Almost. Wow. Uh, I'm not going to give it a one, but two, it's then. a five. It a two. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. This, a, this is a masterpiece. I give it a nine. <laughs> uh, not that quite high. It, originally, I gave it a do it, and I'm going to stick with that. So that would be uh, in, in my usual ba eight. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> you are not allowed to pick movies anymore. Obviously, when I pick a movie, I'm going to enjoy it, so it's going to get a high score for me, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> now, uh, next week, it's going to be Dominic's pick. So, uh, tell everybody what you're going to uh, give us this time. <laughs> I'm going to pick a great movie. I'm going to pick A Haunted House. Oh, God. No, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Kiss me in the park. I, I, that would have thrown you for a loop, wouldn't it, of Wesley? You would have just been. I don't know if I could sit through that again. I don't even have that movie. I've never seen it. Oh, I think it's, it's on Netflix. Bad. It's, it's... Okay, I'm going to pick. Um, I know John just picked this movie up. He just saw it, and got it. I'm going to pick Manchester by the Sea. A very, very <laughs> depressing movie. Yeah, get, get your <laughs> tissues and gallon of ice cream ready for next week. <laughs> so I shouldn't watch it at like 11 o'clock at night when I'm half asleep. No, uh, it's not boring. It's <laughs> no boring at all. I mean, there's not a whole lot going on. It may not keep me awake, you know. Right. It's a it's a really good character study. This is another three hour long movie. Two hours, I think. Two fifteen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Wonderful acting in this, so. Yeah, I do want to see it. Yeah, it's a good movie. Good. Okay, what's All right. Wrap? Well, until next time where we talk about Manchester by the Sea. John, you want to talk about your podcast? Yeah, I have a podcast called We Like Wrestling Podcast. Four guys singing around talking about wrestling. Um, I think this week we have a tournament coming up, Black History Month tournament. Um, we just talked about yeah, we just talk about it. we do some like damn episodes. <laughs> so we have Instagram, we have Twitter, we have Facebook. We like wrestling podcasts available anywhere podcasts are found. All right, and of course for me, you can subscribe right here on YouTube, YouTube.com/slash Westside of Five One Five. Like the show on Facebook, Facebook.com/slash West True Bayless, and of course you can follow me on the Twitter and the Instagram at West Bayless. Until next time, truth out.